It's just the alt proc. Okay. Like, this is the same thing that we saw yesterday from BLG, though, against Gen G. Game one, they banned the Jinx, so then they can kind of operate in towards things like forcing his Ayura Khan out from Kuma Yushi. You go towards the Zeri Lulu and see if they can have a bit of success with that, though. But here, I, that's a, this is the genius of banning the Kha'Zix instead of the Wukong that we are mentioning with our jungle focus for bans, because you can only get one on blue side. They pick the Annie, they split those up, and then they go with the Rakan, so they can still have a really good snap engage. And you know T1, with the Zyra Rakan, have been magnificent. And we were talking to Chronicle earlier. This is not a combo that you want to give over, especially to a player like Carry, and have to see how On's going to match, because Lulu, yes, on looked fantastic yesterday, but it's not the same high-impact playmaker. That said, every time we're seeing this Jinx banned, it's not a Felios prioritized. It's an instant shift of the bot lane meta to kind of these secondary carries of this area, and I expect here the Zaya as well. Yeah, I imagine it will end up going towards that. One of the big things that we saw was that when Knight was playing the Annie, how quickly you could get these engages on towards T1. And the big turnaround that we saw for T1 in these fights was actually carry on this Rakan. So it definitely feels like BLG are taking a page out of what JDG operated with, bringing a bit of their own spice with the Zeri Lulu as well. But then you still see T1 kind of going back towards what they have been most comfortable with and what they performed. And then if we look forward for bans here now for T1, definitely focus on jungle. I think that personally, the poppy has been criminally underrated. Yes! <laughs> they ban, the they profit, ban it out. look at him out here. With, with, all the fo with the other focus then, you're thinking, oh, maybe their, no their, their next jungle ban will either be like Lee Sin or Viego. Yep. Um, Shun, though, with all the talk about all these kindred plays and the, the Nidalee that people don't like, this is the player that is so good individually on those carry jungle champions. It's just that with and, an Annie, I don't think. And to be fair, it. if he can't make it work, I don't think anybody can. <laughs> but again, when there's a Wu Kong on the enemy yeah, team, based on what we yeah. saw yesterday, I would expect the kinder to get one shot. Yeah. I am curious to see what the bands are going to be from BLG, though. I do expect them to go towards that top side. I thought it would be a Scion more of that kind of. Hey, we want to get rid of the tanks because we know Bin likes to play those more car oriented styles. Yeah. I actually thought it'd be Bin who would try and pilot a cannon in towards the top side. So surprised to see that BLG are the ones that are actually getting rid of that. And we'll have to see if they do end up banning the Scion here. I think it would work out well just making sure that these team fights are a little bit easier to execute on if you're straying away from those mega tanks. The other two big AP picks that we have seen kind of come out but be banned away frequently, one is the Gwen, which has managed to make it through. Rumble is the other big one that we saw a bit of presence from and then was essentially just removed from drafts. And one of the big things when you have Annie on your team with the first pick Annie, and especially since they're revealing it's mid lane already, you don't want a lot of extra AP damage on your team because Merc Treads are so valuable versus this champion. Having those stuns and having that magic damage. If they pick the Gwen, Merc Tread's value is to the moon. And I think that's the big one here is, look, you still, as Zayas, get to kind of keep that flexibility here. Could put the Gragas into the top side. You could end up putting it in towards Faker in the mid lane. He played it domestically seven times. So I think that this is what T1 are trying to go towards. It's like, hey, look, do you just go towards something like the Gwen? Cool, we can try and match it. So it looks like instead, Bin is just going to go back towards his Jax. He's been totally fine even in the counter matchup against the Gragas. We saw him beat Doran in that matchup. We'll have to see if Zayas can have a better time now in this one. Ben is Jax. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Keeping the carries here at MSI. Throw it down. He's so confident with it, too. Every interview, every new opponent, he never backs down. He doesn't. Going to be matching up the Gra against the Gragas. Zayas is Gragas, nonetheless. Have to see how he fares the Faker. Opting for the Lissandra in the mid lane. A lot of utility, a lot of engage focus. And I think that just naturally is going to put more and more attention onto Guma, onto Owner, to really be the big difference makers. Because we've seen Sandra an excellent champion if you get the ball rolling. But if you fall behind, it puts that much more pressure on your AD carry to, to really step up. And I think that lack of engagement is kind of the issue for BLG here. You're heavily reliant on Yagao to be this like flash engage tool. Now, for JDG, they end up playing it very, very slow. We're like, look, that has a five minute cooldown. We will only play for Dragons so we can continuously use this any engage as our main engage tool. But they had things like the Wukong to follow up on that. With this composition, you kind of need to blow people up very, very quickly. So I think it's going to take a lot of coordination from BLG, which hasn't always been their strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> expectations, and we'll see if they're able to do the same as we get into game one here. BLG versus T1. I have been so hyped for this matchup. The fact that we got BLG beating Gen G yesterday, it feels like BLG are trying to make that mega run like we saw in the LPL, see if they can get all the way back to finals. I love how everybody's ready for any underdog story after DRX now. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Everyone's just, yes, I believe, yes. I believe. Uh, yes, yes, another one. Well, that's the thing, and I think that it's so impressive that in consecutive international tournaments, we've had a team like BLG or DRX who force you to believe.
It's, yeah. it's not like they're the favorites, and even today, I don't think they're the favorites, but despite that, they continue to surpass all expectations, outperform, show up in the clutch, and that's kind of what the underdog dream is made of. And they've even got the swagger to make it more fun. Ben, Ben to me, is becoming an icon here, almost like Conor McGregor S trash talking. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Before every match, and he comes in, he's still playing carries. Oh. Yep. But I think that's the really sick thing for BLG. Like when we talked about DRX last year, it's like, oh, the meta hit right. You know, you had like Zeku was able to get his hands on Silas and he was able to pop off and all these things. BLG are like, yeah, screw your meta. We're just going to do our thing. <laughs> we're going to play our style and we're going to make sure you have to beat us this way. And I think that's the coolest thing about BLG. Even look at this draft, right? You're not getting this, hey, we want to go for the, the mega carries in that bot lane, put all the beefy boys in front of them. It's like, no, we want to fight you. We want to get aggro and we're going to make sure that you have to hands this dip us here. And if they want to surpass expectations in this series, it's going to be a tall task, especially when we look at the bottom side. Guma Caria on one of the strongest, most uh, aggressive bot side duos we can get. We know what they can do on the Zyra Rakan combo. El has definitely been the center of attention in so many BLG games. If it has not been, it is always, always Elk. And Guma, a big weight on his shoulder in this game and in this series to outperform a player who's had a fantastic tournament. Yeah, just ask KT from uh, LCK about the T1 for Zaya Rakan company. Yeah, I was going to say, Chronicler backstage, every single time it was even remotely hovered, was like, you cannot give these guys Zaya Rakan. They're way too good. They're way too clean. And I think that's going to put a lot of pressure onto Elk and on here to see if they can match up in the 2v2. Because if you can actually get this area into a decent spot and you can have her try and beat that big team fighter later, that's where BLG would be in a good spot. And that's where we can see just how good Elk could be. And we saw yesterday, Ben taking care of business versus Doran versus the Gragas, but Zeus has made the switch here to go for the grasp on the on the Gragas for more sustain, more healing even, instead of the Comet. Uh, taking some notes from the previous matchup there. Also, Zeus, uh, probably higher rated by pretty much everybody. Well, <laughs> and this is a great point because Jap brought it up on, on the desk. In the finals, obviously, you know, Bin had the better win record. But Dagda, when you looked into the laning stats, it, it didn't quite tell the same story. Yeah, especially when you look towards Bin. He has been... Oh, hang on. Oh, hold that thought. Dive on the bottom side of Elias. Immediately going to get the setup. That's going to be a kill on Nakuma. Now can get the reset. Doesn't have tower aggro either but is not going to keep the dive going. Huge in the early game from BLG to shut down this bot side combo. They're going to keep the dive. Caria, blinking how far Spike just fish for the reset. Shun! Oh, that's an up C and one you certainly cannot afford to make. Caria still standing tall, still looking for the outplay. Oh, taking as well! Oh, oh, so damn clean from Caria on the bottom side. At the end of the day, it's a two for two. Yeah, that tower heating up. Shun knew yeah. after he saw that shot come out. He was like, uh-oh, this is going to be bad. He flashes also for it, so BLG, Getting a little bit messy down there, but still, mission accomplished. They got the dive off. They denied the Zaya a bit. It's also the fact that they get the kill on towards Elk, and they get some plates. Now, owner trying to respond to that top side, though Bin has actually been taken to about just half HP. Let's see if there's going to be the response here. Is he just going to be happy with the reset, just crashing the wave here and walking away? Zeus still shows for a bit more. Has the demolish, can just go for that proc, assume that he's going to get it. If we take a look at this, excellent start for BLG. And BLG, they got the information, they know Wukong clearing up to the top side, so Shun comes in. The first kill, great. Very nicely done. But then, as the last minion, this range minion dies, boom, tower shots are on Shun. The other wave hadn't got here yet, and boom, just dies to it. Because that last one had already died, the Caria goes in for the knockup, is able to get it as on is tanking. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like you don't want to be, you know, tanking these turrets as an AD carry or something well, when you change over as Viego. But as much as BLG have done incredible to get here, they have not been without suspect decision making. I feel like once you've denied the resources from the carry, the dive can probably stop. But at the end of the day, still a two for two, not a disaster. Still a lot of CS denied from Guma. Let's see what else they can do with that advantage on the bottom side. Even if it has been mitigated somewhat by the response kills. Yeah, as I was saying, though, Zeus probably a bit higher rated by everybody than Doran, so. Uh, definitely having a better time in here. Also had the jungle come on up. You see the deep ward there by Blue and Gromp. Love that one. Really big information on the second respawn. We'll see that Gromp as Viego comes over. So Shun will be tracked. One of the big things, though, for this top lane matchup, as we were kind of talking about before that dive kicked off, was the fact that we kind of think of Bane as this mega beast in the lane phase. He's going to absolutely manhandle you. But out of the uh, three times you've Hold seen that thought. You're not allowed to talk about top lane while bot lane's fighting. Dagda, wait, wait your turn. Okay, now you can go. Sorry, it's not me, it's them. They don't, they're not interested. Look, I am they're like, well, talk about us. I am well used to LPL games at this stage. I know exactly where I have to shut up, but still need to shut up for this one. We need a talking stick. All right, we pass it to Draco now for the dragon talk. fight. Elk walking over to contest this. There's not really much of an angle, but maybe Shun commits the flash, or at least tries to find the fall. Fight only level four from Guma. 
Oh, continuing to poke down. Owner making his way out of the pit. They don't want to flip it on the fight. Baker level six, though. Might flash just go on. for the engage. Flash out from on. Now Annie can look for the re-engage, but the knockout coming through. Yagao gonna flash out. Shun on the backside. Now looking to turn and burn on the Baker. T1 get the dragon, but it will cost them the life with their mid laner. It was such a weird approach from BLG. You could see Shun wasn't sure if he wanted to get into the pit, had already burnt that flash, so couldn't get over the wall. And then you end up just T1 going right. We'll immediately turn onto the three members of BLG, but they do a great job of kiting back and at least managed to get a kill, but it is the dragon for T1. Yeah, that blast gun was available to try and get in for a steal uh, towards the back, but BLG, you could tell the calls were so clear. We got to get the kill, go for the kill, don't go for the steal here. And as you have the initiation from Faker, gets the flash out, self ults, Yagao also flashes away, and then they get the turn. Lissandra ult is down, he immediately answers with the Tibbers, while T1 do get the objective. And I think at the end of the day, a respectable call when they see kind of the engage not go perfectly. Once they get the anti-flash, they know it's time to back off. They get the dragon. They make the kind of safer trade in that equation rather than trying to continue the fight with Lissandra alt unavailable. And you know what that means is big things for the Zeri. Zeri Lulu still really good scaling uh, as you get towards the later stages and getting those early kills plus, plus that one there picked up. A lot of concentrated gold is going to go far. Definitely a strong start. Dagda, would you like the talking stick? <laughs> you know, I would give you it like up. a turn. All right, you know what? <laughs> Bean gets beaten by Zayas on average. There we go. That's there it is. They played one. seven <laughs> games. Bin's laning stats, not good against Zayas. Important context to have. <laughs> Took yeah. us seven minutes to get <laughs> yeah. On average, Zayas ends up with an 860 gold lead. Now, see, the second I talk, there's more action. So I'm okay with just kind of randomly throwing out stats bit by bit so we get having more action. I appreciate you, Dagda. <laughs> I think sacrifices. We need to make use of this superpower that you have there. Because I like perma action. Action. So, <laughs> whenever the game slows down, Dag, I want you to start talking about Finn's stats. <laughs> His forward percentage. <laughs> no. But I genuinely, I think at this stage, you are for as T1, you got to start trying to figure out ways to make this come back in your favor, right? And at the moment, they're trying to see if they can jump onto Shun. Yeah, I got covering, though. Shun. At a pretty decent XP disadvantage. Level 6 for Owner now coming through. Yagao could just be in trouble. That's the root going in. Remember, he burned the flash in the previous fight. Throwing down the bear early. He's trying to get more space. But Owner now going to follow up. That's one on the Cyclone. Making it look easy. Clean pick for T1. Wukong getting kills. I think everyone at this tournament is almost traumatized at this point with how powerful this champion will get. It brings so much to those team fights. And as you look down here, is starting up Rift Herald. Level 6 acquired by Shun off of his jungle, though. Baker off of that kill. Will come over, lend that mid lane support. And since Yigao doesn't have teleport, should be T1 closing. Okay. But the bottom lane rotation is first from BLG. Zaya left up. on bottom side. And now looking to follow up immediately. Going to ult. Objective still alive, but it's going to get picked up in the end. Owner now needs to make his way out. He's got no ult. Goes invisible, tries to find it. But Shun now looking for the follow up. Take the jungler out of the equation. The recall still trying to get completed. Baker now forced to back away. But here comes out. Shun gonna find one, Shun gonna find the reset. Elk trying to get the chain lightning through to finish off Baker. Can they keep the dive going? Zayas, body slam. Where is it gonna go for now? They're being corralled under their tower. T1 got the objective, but they're not gonna oh. make it out with their lives. The turn, the fire back is damn clean, but BLG still coming ahead and kills. Elk only has one button on its go forward. May have gone a little bit too far forward underneath the tower, but BLG are still up to make it work. Yago yeah, down to this bottom side to cover, but he does have to be careful. That's a lot of damage that can come out very quickly from this bot lane. Instant engage on the bottom side. The Annie gonna get cut down. The Feathers coming back, the root, but not enough to finish Yagao. Yeah, Gunway continuing to step forward, taking the towers. Yagao needs to make it out, but again, he is flashless, and he is knocked down. T1, they get the Rift Herald, and they get the bottom lane dive. They left Guma on the bottom side to mine turret plates. They get Garia back down there to make the assassination as well. That is huge. A lot of kills there for the chase on BLG, though on the top side, and uh, Elk, as he said, going deep, gets responded to by the flash for Zeus, so they do get the answer on the kill. But here's another look at it. T1 trying to be a little bit greedy, finish this one while also going for the bottom side play, but I was surprised. I think Shun did not have Smite there as it got down to 18 health. And owner's able to pick it up. And just a great rotation as well from BLG's bot lane. They had to push and bot, they immediately start to rotate up. But this is a little bit too far from Elk. Whereas he starts to go underneath here, tries to stop the resets, flashes forward, miscalculates, and a great flash from Zeus there to immediately get the turnaround the second he sees Elk go that bit too far forward. Good heads up play, ultimately gold lead in favor of BLG for now. It is a dragon and the Herald in favor of T1. Focus on the Faker, Faker, the claw. Just barely able to complete their clutch timing to make it out to safety. Yeah, on trying to combo there with Lulu ultimate, try and keep that Lissandra CC'd so he's not able to get Claw or ultimate off, but Faker escapes with his life. Owner might pay though. There's a ward inside the brush. Miss coming in. 
Shun not able to take the objective, but now going to follow up. Owner, is he going to be forced to burn the ultimate here to escape? Now he'll be fine. Not nearly enough damage from the Viego yet, but getting closer and closer to the Sunderer for both of the top side members of BLG. You can see Owner really doesn't want to try and sacrifice this bot side, though. He knows that it'll end up leaving Kerry and Gumiyushi on their own. The wave isn't in the best of spots, so try to see if he can stick around here. Shun had backed away, so it doesn't look like there would be any sort of play onto this bot end at the moment. Pushing for the angle. Interested to see the individual gold between both these players. Guma obviously grabbing a couple of plates, but 3-1 the kill score overall. I'm kind of assuming it's in favor of Elk. We'll see who completes their Mythic first, and it is pretty heavily in favor of Elk. Thank you, Observers. 1.2k advantage, massive. Not turning into an item advantage yet, as he has not spent a lot of that money. So maybe T1 feel like they have a window to contest here, but no setup. Yagao already covering the angle of the river. It's going to be a tough contest. Owner now walking in, but the objective already gone. Faker, claw in, might just want to keep this one going. Can they get Elk out of the fight? But Yagao with the counter engage <laughs> is huge. That Annie ult, and now the reset coming in for the jungler. The Viego is going to take over the fight, and Yagao is still standing. He goes golden. Bin trying to find his way into the back line, but it is all falling apart for T1. And Shun just tears through on stepping forward. The Lulu empowered by the Annie shield. They're going to keep it going. One more reset for Shun, taking Guma Yushi's body. Taking his soul, taking the fight and the triple as well. It's a triple for Sean. And when the chips are down, Yagao manages to come out once more. He had some really clutch charms yesterday. And now in the Annie, he's showing up again. Dacta, those resets. We said a champ select. Whoever gets the first one is going to pop off. And it is. Shun, oh my goodness. They got the dragon. They get all of the kills here. Honestly, the Annie just doing what the Lissandra wants to do, but better there. Yagao with the flash in, lays down the Tibbers. Shun, even though he executes on the clone, still able to finish off Owner over there. And they get the resets coming through, demolishing T1. Nope. But now, Elk caught out. Are they going to continue to step forward here? Can they stop the Herald from crashing? This is big. Elk alone just pushing three members back. The looming threat of a counter engage stops it in its tracks. BLG just continuing to come ahead play after play after play. And this is very similar to what we saw in game one yesterday versus Gen G. Elk on the Zeri, getting ahead, getting fed. And now once more in a commanding position. The call has popped. He's so, super far ahead. And BLG, I mean, this again, they just seem to be coming out swinging every time. It's T1 who went for the aggressive engage, BLG firing back with that counter engage. T1 certainly going to respect it more in the fights to come, but it's hard now. Goal difference going to continue to mount against them. Divine Sunder completed for both topsiders. Good news, owner not too far behind in itemization overall, but it's tricky to play out these fights if Annie starts to get any further ahead. And that's the thing. I think for T1, their pick potential is incredible. So, and you've seen before, BLG aren't the best at actually trying to be on the same page. So I think in moments like this, where BLG are maybe pushing that a little bit far forward, you can look to try and have that pick happen as T1. Owner with the Divine Sunder already there with Faker can easily kill one of these members that are alone. And T1 do have a lot more options for Engage as we've, we've gone over here. It doesn't have to just be Faker. Uh, Faker now. Try to claw out safety. Crown gonna get popped here. You got not gonna connect on the stun, will walk away. But again, we're seeing a lot more Crown and the Shattered Queen over the last two days, mitigating some of these upfront burst damage. But here's the counter engage, massive from Yagao. Yeah, so Faker goes in, he self ults, but that's not keeping any of them down. So you get the Annie combination, they're so low. Shun's able to chop down everyone, finishing them off as Bin walked down and they had the teleport from Zeus. Massive stuff here for BLG. Yeah, huge. The fact that Shun ends up getting so many of these resets and kills as well is just massive. Getting this Viego ahead, especially when he'd already had that little bit of an upsie in the early stages, but yeah, Gao going down for it. I think this is going to help out huge in that jungle matchup. Also, just the fact that Yagao ends up burning his flash at that uh, Dragon Pit means that by default he's going to have a backup as well for the next Dragon. So I think a lot of this is going to be a case of, again, if BLG can try and play for these Dragons, play off Yagao's flash, and get those turnaround engages against T1. And the changes that T1 need to make is to have Karia and Zeus on the same page with Faker. That combination of champions can have a much bigger impact. If you get the Rakan to actually CC them and have that AoE follow-up damage there uh, to really set up owner. BLG poking, not looking to give T1 the opportunity to group, to refocus, to use all of that CC together, continuously trying to split them up. Zelk steps forward. For now, eyes on the second Herald. T1, okay vision as they're able to drop a ward over the wall and at least know that it has not been started by the side of BLG, but BLG fighting for mid-priority. T1 have set up the map well. You can see Faker pushed in top side though, and now that gives them that angle to come in from that top end of the map. Gumiyushi and Zeus are here to just continue to clear out mid. So while this is a bit of a standoff, it is actually BLG falling behind because they haven't put Bin or Yago down on spot side because they're lacking that teleport. You just try to force in here, but Owner walking in the darkness, fishing. Long flank. flank. Elk isolated for now, has to be careful. Bin stepping forward, Ultra Shock Laser not going to connect. 
staying in the darkness. Faker ready to come in as well right now, as you highlighted. T1 continuing to get advantages. Entire waves are being deleted on the top side while BLG debate what the option is. They're trying to find the flanker. They found, they found him. him. Secret agent owner has been exposed. Needs to get out. Needs to wait for the clone to body block the stun. He's going to try to make it out, but he's just going to get taken down. Jungler off the menu, and that means that the Herald is that much easier. Now you gal might just try to keep the ball rolling here in the mid lane. And BLG also making this call to pull off the Rift Herald while they waited the extra few seconds for Yagao's flash. Now Yagao has flash right back up for Annie. One of the most critical summoner spells for this team. They find Owner in the back trying to get his super long flank off. And now they're going to get the rewards of being able to start up the Rift Herald themselves. And there's Dragon in a couple of seconds, so there's an opportunity here for BLG to shove out waves, have a quick reset before Owner comes back out onto the map, and then contest for this Dragon once more. A lot of vision from both sides has been best into that top lane, so with T1 kind of giving up this Rift Held, they should actually be able to move down to this bot lane and establish themselves, but we'll have to see if they're even going to bother here as BLG. Finn, continue to poke down on the top side. Proc, is it going to be enough? I think waiting as long as possible to deny... Deny cannon! Deny, deny cannon! You just auto it! You hit it whenever you want, Bin. Denying as many minions <laughs> as he possibly can. But in the meantime, T1 are on the bottom side. They're starting the dragon. So instead, the focus being put on the top side, BLG, it seems just going to look to reset, not trying to capitalize on that window of opportunity, not trying to over push on a tempo advantage. And I think that was the big one. The fact that T1 had that reset because they weren't investing time into the Herald. They're just like, cool, we can move down. We can set up vision control. And when you're going into this T1 side, vision control is cu uh, crucial. And it could be here as well as T1 are setting up. Yeah. Oh, the double daggers, the feathers hitting Yagao, taking away that crown of the Shattered Queen is big, making the follow-up dive that much easier. But for now, they're just going to call it off. They got the dragon on the bottom side, owner returning to his own jungle to farm up. Right now, 3k, 4k, gold lead for BLG, two dragons to T1, but have to see where the next avenue of attack is going to be. Expect this game, like every other game this tournament, to be mostly about the 5v5s, believe it or not. And who gets the star in those? It is the 80 carries, my friend. Currently with the item advantage here, with all the focus from BLG towards the bottom side. That early dive that they were able to pull off to deny a bunch of minions from Guma. Riftail dropped in mid, though, to get that coveted mid lane priority. It is so, so powerful in setting up way before these objectives arrive. Right now, though, Faker looks to be the one trying to find the second on angle on the show, but he's unstoppable. He's trying to make it out. They need to burn through the Viego as quickly as they can, denying the resets. Faker finding a reset of his own. The Frozen Thrall not going to find any purchase, but Elk on the backside. Elk untouched for now. Faker going golden. The follow up should be there from the side of BLG, looking to lock him down. Faker baking it out to safety. The Claw getting him out of the fight. T1 finding a clean pick, but Elk debating. Can he keep this going? Can he continue to walk forward? The answer is no. T1 already. Elk still standing. <laughs> the feathers fly, but they will not find their target as Elk manages to make it out alive. I love it. <laughs> People always talk about Elk being the successor to Jackie Love, really keeping you on the edge of your seat there. He barely gets out alive. But we, we got to see from T1 that minor adjustments where they had the Rakan engage with the Lissandra engage to get the actual kill. And I think that's what, the big one, the fact that they're trying to make this work, but just couldn't quite do it. And then Elk at the end, I mean, I think at least the difference maker here is that Elk survives, whereas Jackie Love traditionally wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for T1, they're a little bit annoyed at that. Good opportunity here, because they knew that Yaga was down on the bottom side trying to play for tower. So they just go for it, but watch Bin here. Big stun, which prevents so much of the follow-up from coming through, which means Elk is able to actually push forward. But it's very difficult for T1, after they have their initial engage, to try and burst through this gap with Yaga TPing in to actually get access to Elk. Yeah, BLG have been very, very adamant at looking for even 4v5 plays if they know you have used all of your initiation as Elk is able to flash over, slide through the wall. We've all been there trying to kill the Zeri <laughs> shield bow, <laughs> uh, plus that much mobility. But the real important thing there is that that time, T1 did exactly what we wanted. They combined Karia and Zeus with the Faker engage to actually get the kill onto Shun in the first place. And then as you said, they knew they had to back off after that, after expending so many cooldowns for themselves. Faker on the top side. I'm just going to try to clear this wave, but I think it's so important. I think Shun and Elk have to be your priority targets because we've seen Elk in the earlier fights, even when he wasn't dealing a ton of damage, it was Shun with the resets. And while the sound resets are solid, the Viego resets with so much CC and T1 kits are just incredibly oppressive. I think one of the big things as well was like, even though it wasn't intentional, Elk did get the TP out from Faker. So now you don't actually have that TP available for Faker to try and have T1 play side lanes that little bit easier. And the fact that Yago had to burn his TP to get in as well, it's going to make things just that little bit easier for BLG trying to play at the map state when T1 have been playing that better than them this game.
Vin now moving to the bottom side, but breaking open that tier one mid lane is big, especially if they can set up deeper vision in the T1 jungle. We've seen a lot of the anti games be defined by these picks or flash engages from Fog of War. Certainly easier to get that vision control without the mid lane tower clearing out creep waves so quickly. Vin and Zayas still trading blows on the bottom side. Hasn't necessarily been as explosive as I was anticipating, much more about their presence in the team fights. One of my favorite things with the meta really turning towards, uh, you know, carries, AD carries and team fight meta is that it puts more of a magnifying glass on those initiations and on the front line for these teams so that we get more rewards and more recognition for a lot of those snap initiations you're talking about. As uh, Bin in the side lane here on the Jax with Divine banging away on the Gragas. We are about to get that extra level for Zeus though at his 10 stacks for his Rod of Ages soon, so he's about to get his spike. Of course, the lane gets a little bit harder once Divine Sunder comes around, and there's that much more sustain for Bin. Part of the reason why you see uh, a bit of healing reduction in the back pocket of Zayas, just to make that individual matchup that much easier. Zayas, a lot more tools to impact the team fight, though. The cast, the body slam, flash setup can do a lot of work for the 5v5. Also, as far as item completion points here that are very big, T1, you want to make use of big ability damage for Gumayushi. His quick plays are done as Karia able to slip away, but Zaya Quick Blades are quite big for the big blade caller that they want to wombo combo with all that CC. And T1 were trying to play off of their vision there, but they hadn't actually spent the bush properly. Owner on the pixel brush was caught out, so BLG were like, cool, we don't actually need to try and engage onto this or push forward. We can just threaten mid, and the second they do, T1 have to back off, and now it's BLG that have control over the river, and you can see, nice from the observers, how dark it is for T1 to try and move in there. Dark and an ocean rift as well, so extra brushes to worry about. Right now, Yagao looking for the setup. is just going to try to immediately find two. There's no follow-up, but it will force the ulti out from Kuma. Give them control of the pit. Zeus, a little bit of no man's land here. Can't just body slam over the wall, but does he have the cooldown waiting as long as he can before he goes over? But they're trying to body block. They're forcing the flash out early. Now T1 taking the space given to them. Over collapsing on Zeus has given T1 access into the river. But again, owner fishing for the flank. This time unspotted. This time BLG not sniffing him out. Will it be enough? The Ultra Shock Laser, they know that he's coming. They get the objective, and they might just look to turn onto owner. Elk still standing for now. Immediately get all immediately gonna look to burn through owner. Bin on the backside, fishing for a stun, but he won't find much. Faker now trying to re-engage onto Elk, but the cleanse is there. Faker now gonna be in trouble with the stun, but there is no follow-up. Elk for now uncontested. Guma uncontested. Both 80 carries doing everything they can to try to shift the fate of their teams, but it has been looking oh! for the stun. It has been into the back line to break down Guma, but Guma says not today with Caria beside him. He defies death and it is Elk in trouble but he fires back no as way. well on the edge of madness on the edge of insanity they finally kill the 80 carry of BLG oh these 80 carries cutting down members mid-air as they're flying right to their faces and in the end T1 survive that feather auto attack as Ben is leaping towards his face the initiation did get the full flank from owner. They saw him really early on the control ward, so they knew he was coming around that angle, and Elf being able to, able to survive the very beginning was huge. But look at the chase down. Faker just bought so much time. Elk wasn't able to get into this fight, whereas Guma Yushi is in a position where he can actually start to hit onto people. You've got a ton of peel that's coming through for Guma as well. And Bane, I cannot believe he can't get this last auto attack. I'm pretty sure if he actually oh. manages to get that, oh. this could be a very different fight. You've got the shields coming through from Yago onto Elk, but with all four members of T1 still standing, there's not much that Elk can do as they start to engage, even just barely missing that uh, body slam from Zayas. But it doesn't matter. T1 still come out on top. So big. Karia keeping Guma alive up there, only to get that chase down. Then Yagao peeling there with Elf. Now we're right back to live, though. 2-2 in Drake's 1K difference. This is about as close as this is ever going to get. Both sides looking, fishing for an angle. Zayas in the darkness, been behind him. Where's the setup going to be for now? Just a bit of poke on Zayas. Body slam back just to trade. And we're now at the point of the game where every team fight starts to feel so tense because you know a, a convincing team fight win could end the game. We've seen T1 do it, just immediately run down the mid lane with any kind of significant advantage. And in the same vein, Baron also on the table for both sides. And the thing is, you're, you have so many more options as we already kind of talked about in T1, but because you have more options, you've got more flashes that could actually set up that engage. Carry still is his, Faker taking a claw and a flash in. Whereas when you look across at BLG, it's only Elk who still has that flash up and available. And as we get to the 25 minute mark, you know T1 are looking at Baron. You know they want to try and bait BLG into that situation. And if you're walking in blind as BLG, T1 are gonna happily jump on top of them. But it could easily swing the other way as well. Now that they've got Elk on three item power spike, he's been slightly ahead of Guma this whole game. Now he's got his quick blades with his shield bow uh, as far as the Randuins goes. So, so Elk definitely 
he could have that high high again. These team fights are so explosive, so exciting here. No vision to support the split push, but Davis is going to come down and just try and push in your guy's face. And a lot of tension again. Fake clearing out the vision. Carry it behind him to make sure that he can do this. T1 gaining control over the pit, and we've seen T1. I mean, a hallmark of their domestic play was aggressive, aggressive Baron start. Q highlighted the quick plays on Zaya earlier, allows her to tear through that objective if given even 20 seconds alone. And now, Guma waiting for his Bloodthirster, T1. I think they just want to farm him a bit more gold, complete that, and then feel really, really comfortable, because then you've got your Zaya ultimate, plus you've got that big shield. Red buff on Guma, they're going to feed him the mid wave. Mid lane priority, once you shove this in, then you get to move in for the vision by Baron. It's the one-two step that every top team uses here to control these transitions. I will say, though, I'm surprised the way the BLG are setting up on the map. Jax is now moving into that top side to spit push. But Jax has TP. I think you do a better job against the Gragas on the bot side. You can put pressure onto Tier 1, Tier 2. But BLG really haven't been utilizing Vin as effectively as they could be, not only just at MSI, but across domestically as well. So I think this is where BLG are kind of missing out on some of their advantages now. You can see they're actually going to start changing that up with Dragon just about to spawn in 50 seconds. Exactly. What we just saw is they use that T1. They get their preemptive vision here in the jungle, these two wards. Then they can come back, push that mid, and transition over to Dragon. 42 seconds left on it. The timer on the setup here for T1 is towards Dragon. And they have this straggling ward on Baron just to see if there was a BLG answer to try and quick pull. And it looks like BLG are basically trying to pull T1 out of that position. Say, hey, look, we can threaten this uh, Baron very, very quickly, especially with the amount of damage dealers that they have. So T1 are now starting to get pushed in, which gives BLG the option now to start moving across. And those wards I just pointed out in the jungle for T1 that they place for this dragon preemptively could be spots for Faker to teleport and go for a flank on with this Lissandra with Flash. They just saw the two resets coming through from Elkin on, which is why T1 now very aggressively moving in, even going down potentially towards his bottom size to see the Jacks, but they're happy to stand it up. They know the Elkin on aren't in a position here. Then starting to hover in, shunned in the darkness in the mist, trying to find an angle into the pit. Trinket's now coming out. They've got a decent idea of the health bar. Ultra Shock Laser coming in as well. He's trying to steal it, but Kuma able to grab it. Clean Dragon for the side of T1. They're not going to try to force a fight. They'll just walk away, happy to have the prize for free. And now they get to move across into this top side and re-establish all that vision that we were talking about. Big mistakes from Elkin on. They end up getting caught on the reset. They spot them out and T1 are like, fantastic, we know this is a 3v5. We don't have to fight, we can just take the objective. Exactly, T1 doing really well with their vision resources and those small seconds making the difference on their setup. The travel time on getting there, you can't be a few seconds slow on these objectives versus these teams because you blink and it'll be gone. Combined it there. Now it's BLG's turn. T1 got the chance to move it to the top side. They lay down a little bit of vision. They clear out a bit of vision. BLG with mid prio now able to do the same. It's, it's a bit of a back and forth exchange here. See what T1 does when they go for their resets, when they get mid prio again. If anyone wants to break the cycle by setting up for a pick, by hiding in the fog of war, but for now it seems like both sides intend to just farm and to, and to wait. I want to see the Zeus ultimate when he gets a death cap here. The big <laughs> bomb ball on this Gragas. 10 stacks on his dark seal. Working on his death cap here to try and combine those two rods could have a, a huge, huge impact as this Gragas. Yeah, and again, credit to Zayas and credit to T1 because BLG had a pretty significant goal lead for a decent portion of this game, especially after that bot side dragon fight where they re-engaged, but clawing it back through good fighting and in no small part due to Bin, or sorry, Zeus and his uh, excellent execution on this pick. I mean, the, his split pushing is just so good. The Rod of Ages plus T1 having him catching all these side waves, he's level 17 now in this game. Three levels over his own mid laner, the, the, the utility mid lane champions now. This is your mid lane life. Meanwhile, Bin trying to catch up there. It's, it's hard to deal with the extra level from the Rod of Ages, but he's doing his best. He's got his level 16, and he's got his stopwatch for the fight, so has that extra few seconds to be able to buy in the team fight. That Jax AoE stun follow up could be big. And I think now they're trying to utilize that spit pushes T1 to just get control of side lanes, push them the entire way in. And when you're in that position, it becomes very easy then for Faker to just kind of make these map movements where you can just push in top and immediately drift across 
into the jungle there. And if you're able to establish that vision again, you, it's so easy for T1 to either make a pick or turn onto Baron, force TPs from BLG, and it's just a rinse and repeat for T1 that becomes super difficult for BLG to deal with. And it's just BLG not playing the map well. Yeah, Gao fishing, trying to take the Gragas out of the equation. He's got no defensive items. He's running out to safety. Now the re-engage coming. Bin, will he fully commit here? Guma throwing down the feathers, trying to stop the engage in his tracks. Owner on the retreat. T1 on the retreat. Jun stepping forward. The Rook gonna connect. Faker now looking for a re-engage of his own. Is gonna try to make it out to safety. BLG desperate to get these kills kicked off, but they're just gonna force T1 back. I love how much damage Elk will squeeze out. He's so aggressive on this area, charging forward with those hurricane belts. Bolts just being belted out here. He chases T1 down. Zayus gets chunked out. Owner gets chinked out. Now they don't have a lot of cooldowns for this Baron bait. Both AD carries have no summoners or no flashes. That's the big one here. Gumayushi not having access to that ultimate as we might be looking to go. Oh, <laughs> making it out over the wall. Luxury of this pick. Part of the reason they prioritize it over something like Ophelia is the safety, the reliability it has just to escape those scenarios. But I think frustrating for BLG, they burned so much to, to force Zayus away. Zayus walks back with full health and it just forces them out immediately. All right. Both AD carries too do have cleanse options. Elk with the summoner spell. Gumayushi with the Quicksilver Sash purchased here. Is down a DPS item, but does have that extra utility. And just as you say it, Mikhail's coming through for on as well. A lot of defensive tools for Elk, but we've highlighted a lot throughout the game. Again, really good counter punch, really good engage if you gal can find those angles. But T1 have so many tools that they can kind of throw out. They can test the waters. They can see if there's an avenue to force a fight. And it makes it so difficult for BLG because you kind of get one moment to pick your shot. Yagao picked his shot in mid lane, didn't work. And now we're waiting minutes until that flash is up and available again. You don't really have a minute. I mean, even looking at the, the dragon that's about to come up, that's going to be sold for T1, and they're going to try and force themselves over towards that objective. Faker again, acting as that split push roll on bot side, and it's BLG who are like, cool, let's see if we can burn that teleport from Faker. Now looking to burn it down. They've already started the objective. Carrier throwing the control ward over the wall. They're going to cut through that one, deny as much vision as they can to T1. Yagao on the flank, immediately going to find the stun bin with the follow-up. Going to try to cut him down before any CC can be used. That Zayas deleted. The Gragas body stolen. The shutdown coming through. BLG priority access to the pivot. Owner still waiting over the wall. Shouldn't will he go over? Will they keep this one going? Bin looking for an opportunity to reset. He lost a decent amount of health. BLG, eyes on the prize, eyes on the Baron. Debating if this is an option for them. T1 ready to contest this 4v5. Bin isolated onto the side. Charm coming out. Flash out to safety. Isolating the jacks. Now it's a 4v4. 3k getting lower. It's a 50-50. Oh. They're going to flip it. They're going a little bit deeper. Owner being isolated. Owner being knocked away. Elk untouched on the backside. Baron getting lower and lower. Owner finish. just wants to burn through the Baron. Owner just wants to get out and he's going to take it. He steals it. He does not care for the fight. He wants the objective. Carry and Guma on the retreat. Bin going golden. Buys a moment. BLG have to re engage. BLG have to take these Barons away from T1. Elk running forward. Guma gonna find the stairs onto two, just desperate to disengage. Will give his life so the remaining members of his team can escape. It is a heist for the side of T1, but they walk away with the Baron. The chase is still on, though. The cops are still on the way, but BLG will be thwarted. They will just back away. They will get several of those kills. They will get the third dragon, but T1 managed to steal that Baron so well. Dang, T1 really <laughs> loves flipping Barons. Owner just walks in 2,000. 1,900 health, and they themselves bully it down. Shun with the flash. In the end, BLG actually do deny the soul after that, and with the extra kills, they're not, they're not even mad. Let's take a look, though. This is after Bin gets completely pushed out of the fight. Now he has no E, he has no flash. Carry used the ultimate to do it, and Owner gets a knock up onto Shun. He goes into the Zonias, then just walks in. Shun flashes away from He's the Baron. the Baron. <laughs> so Shun, Owner was like, okay, if Shun just flashed away, let's try and finish it. He gets it. Even as Shun tries to get back in there and Faker the sacrifice, but then the rest of them. Also, Kuma Yushi laying down these feathers, trying to chase them out, getting three members low. Elk doesn't care, though. He charges forward with the support of that Lulu. And it's a good call for T1, because in theory, we already hit, hit on a BLG, don't have a lot of ways after Yagao to really close the distance, but it's just the speed ups coming through from the Lulu, making it so tough to get away in that situation. And BLG are able to chase them down. You can see the damage dealt in that fight. Insane damage what? from Gumiyushi, but not quite enough. What was it that a chronicler said about Gumiyushi Kari and Zyra Khan? Was he said, did he say give it to them? They're not very good, I can't. <laughs> Seems like they're pretty sick on the pick, and you can see even if BLG take the fight, T1, 
That was a wild play. If that had failed, that would have looked like one of the most catastrophic failures in the event. But they steal the objective, they get out, they keep the Barons up on two members. Incredible stuff. But the thing is, though, you're up against Elk and On. Elk has a 71% win rate across both MSI and his domestic region on this pick. It has been such a big pick for BLG, and you're starting to see why 7, 3, and 8 approaching full build now at this stage. BLG are going to be looking to use this mega cannon in the back line to see if they can take down T1. But with T1 having that barn, it makes it a bit tough now for BLG to really break what has been such a stalemate between these two teams. All right. Very tense team fights here. Going to come down to a lot of the vision setup too. Worth pointing out, the whole reason we ended up in that situation was that T1 had to come into vision and you just went over. Yigao didn't have flash ready for that one. And him being in that fog of war, on the brush, they stomp Zeus again. Zeus keeps walking up, the Gragas gets chunked out the first time, then he gets taken down the second time, leading to the whole scenario. And the big thing for T1 now, Zayas picking up the stopwatch, delayed a bit to get the death cap to do more damage, but has tools to mitigate the potential to get picked off in the fights to come. So one more window of opportunity, closing for now for BLG. Gonna have to find those angles, but flashes back up, you highlight it. Yagao got away without needing it in the previous exchange. If he can find an angle to lock down some of the squishier members of T1, we could see a very BLG favorite fight. That's why vision control gives you so many rewards here. If they're forced to come up and face check you, BLG don't care if it's the front line. Fine. Zeus, you're the one face checking. You're the big Gragas. Don't care. It does feel like the best way to do this, though, is T1 is to actually try and get control over mid, which we're kind of seeing, and then drift across into here. You already have Faker pushing down to this bottom side as well. So as long as you can set up your vision control in that little area, it becomes very hard then for BLG to actually move in. And your biggest focus is on Soul in the minute 45. You now establish the vision, which you can see going in already. Like from Carrier, he's already started to pop these down just here. And then you've got TP opportunities for Faker, for Zayas. You have a ton of vision. And it becomes very difficult for BLG to establish themselves in River because of where they're positioned on the map. All right. Are we going to get a Zeri moment, though? Because we've got a full <laughs> build Elk. He has two answers for the CC that comes from T1. The Mikhail's, the Cleanse. He's got the three, Mikhail actually. <laughs> how, ma how many questions do you have answers for? Well, all yes. of them. <laughs> He's got the entire test written down the key. <laughs> Elk will be completely free in this fight. So many answers. Now the only hard thing is not doubling up on those cleanses. Have to have that discipline in the fights, not to waste cooldowns, not to overlap, to layer the CC perfectly. It's going to be all about execution for both sides, fishing for those angles. Owner and Ben trading blows on the bottom side of the river. 50 seconds till the soul will spawn for either side. Either one wanting to give it up. I think especially crucial for T1 to take it away. They have so much upfront burst damage. If they cannot delete a health bar, find a reset, find a quick pick, this game gets so much harder. But it's a similar story on the opposite side for BLG as Shonen Bin just look to take some space here in the river. Yeah, and both teams know it. Stopwatches, Guardian Angels being purchased, Zonias to try and deny those resets. They know if a frontline member goes down, then you start getting resets coming through. BLG though, they move in. They sweep that vision that you're talking about. It's 38 minutes, everything is up. Every cooldown, every option, every tool. It's all just about who can execute better. Faker throwing out the claw, fishing to get any kind of cooldown, any kind of advantages. Elf just starts to lay down a little bit of poke here. And he can afford to be really aggressive. He's got double shields on his team, the Lulu shields, the Annie shields, and the triple cleanses. So he can be very aggressive on this area, trying to get health chunks on people. He's gonna do, he's gonna be the one leeching the dragon. Owner on the flank. Trying to get over the wall, Yagao looking for the engage, just trying to take Zeus out of the exchange. Zeus still standing strong, the steal! The Ocean Soul owner does it again! Masterclass, the heist coming through, and BLG now desperate, trying to force a fight, trying to get T1 out of this map. Owner! Oh, no. He knew what he was doing all along with that Baron! He steals the Baron, he comes in, he steals the Dragon! T1, hugely favored in the fight now. Ocean Soul massive against a lot of this upfront damage. Yigao burned a lot of his abilities already. They're looking to lock down Zayas, but Zayas just healing up, healing through it. Elk on touch on the backside for now. Keep your eyes on the AD carry. The knockback only into the wall, not into the waiting arms of the rest of the team. Faker stunned. Faker about to fall. Will fall as he comes out of this one. Not a lot of tools left. He's going to use the second oh. stopwatch effect to try to live as long as possible. Off on the side is Elk, but he's split from the rest of the team. The shutdown coming through. The reset now coming through. T1 taking the fight, taking the soul, and looking to grab the Baron as well. Oh. Who was positioning in that fight was so damn good. He was over 
over the wall. You can see that Bin was trying to get access to him, but always had the members of T1 beside him. And now T1 onto the Baron. Elk trying to step up, but there's just no way in. T1, steal Baron, steal Dragon, and now get a Baron for themselves as well. So much of this game has been neck and neck. Guma and Elk both showing up in the fights. It is owner, ultimately, who is the difference maker. The stolen Baron, the stolen soul. He has been so incredibly clutch for T1 in game one. What a banger. Let's take a look at it. So you know that the main DPS, your Zeri is on Dragon, burning Dragon down. Your Gal goes for the chunk on Zeus like they just did in the previous fight. There was no threat on killing him, and then boom. Damn. Wukong over the wall. Owner says, thank you for the leash. And now they've got Ocean Soul, so they have so much sustain in this fight. T1, no, they don't have to rush it. Trying to play it a little bit slow here, chasing BLG, and then once Karia sees the angle onto Yagao, good night. But look at Argumi Yushi's position. No one can really threaten him, and he's constantly getting these feathers into the choke point that BLG are trying to fight through. So the second you start to push forward at BLG, you're just getting ripped apart by these feathers. Even been there because owner was positioned beside Gumi Yushi, can't really threaten Guma in the spot that he's in. Even having the Feather Storm, really top tier stuff from the T180 carry. Yeah, the, these AD carries are so safe. Whoa, hold on. We yeah, are gonna fishing, get a face trying off. to burn through carry. A carry has no defensive tools of his own, but he might just make it out of safety. What? Ocean Soul, baby! Heal him up, watch him walk away. Clutch from Carrier to make it out. It's the steal with the salt of the wound there as Kerry is able to escape, but it does slow down T1 that little bit as they're not gonna be able to follow fully on this bar now. He chaosed himself for the, just the tiniest yeah. little sliver of hope there to make it out to safety. Credit to him to survive, obviously taking out a major engage option could be BLG and Angle to at least slow down this Baron, if nothing else. I just love the evolution of BLG. This team that has been underrated all year long, showing up so big here at MSI. I mean, people were saying they couldn't hang with the, the three top dogs of T1, Gen G, and JDG, but they are, they have that dog in them as well. Yep. Let's see if they still can repel this T1 fight because now they're coming with Ocean Soul, that big advantage, and they're slowly taking away the secondary turrets first. Owner going with the wall immediately coming right back. Just getting it a bit of a poke here, knowing it'll stick that much more effectively given that they have Ocean Soul on their side. Yeah, waiting. The angle coming in. Owner uh -oh. trying to find a way to back on Carrier, ready to fall. They're taking their time. They're delaying the re-engage. Carrier trying to find the angle, but now BLG fighting their way back out. How they overcommitted. The TP now coming in onto the anti bear Owner getting cut down. The Ocean Soul not enough. The reset's coming in. The stolen Wukong is all eyes on Guma. Guma, can he do it? But it's Elk getting rooted up, and Elk tearing through the team. If you give BLG an inch, they will take everything from you. Elk, three kills in the fight. BLG refused to go down. Elk steps up. Says Guma Yushi, what you got on the feathers? Miss by an inch. BLG, they might have just done it. Incredible push down the mid lane. They found the fight. The reset coming in for Baker. The death timer is too damn long. A single cannon creep will be enough to allow them to break open the base. Baker going to do everything he can to clear that one away. No big objectives on the map. Yes, they have won the fight, but if they do not end the game, it will not mean a damn thing. The wave coming in, Baker has to give his life to clear this wave if he wants to keep the hopes alive here in game one. Five seconds on Karia, getting lower. Nine seconds, Baker, eyes on the prize, looking to clear the wave. Shun now locked up. Can they find the kill on the Faker before the fight kicks off? Karia, ready to reset, ready to find the CC to protect his mid laner. T1 holding on, but the re-engage is there. Elk gonna grab another two with his owner onto the backside, but Bin has his eyes on the prize, his eyes on the nexus of T1, as BLG will take the first game. Oh, they've got that dog in them all right. <laughs> BLG, they stare him in the face. Nice Ocean Soul also don't care. Owner goes down under that tower and Elk runs them over. I look at Tabe on your screen there. That is a man who is so incredibly happy with his boys. The fact that BLG again coming up against the LCK powerhouses and managing to take that game one where no one expected them to be able to do it. Everybody loves underdog stories. I love this. I love BLG this. <laughs> cruising through MSI here. They have so much momentum they're building up. The confidence is overflowing. <laughs> There, been keeping the, the stern, cool expression. It is only one game, but what a first game. More than 40 minutes long, back and forth, nail-biting team fights, almost dead even on the gold leads, and you know, T1, that has to hurt because that was anyone's game right up until the final moments. I love it. Oh.